Hello, good afternoon. This is Sage reporting to you live from Kalkine Studio. It's lunchtime here in Sydney and you know what that means. It's time for the Mid-Market Pulse. So let's zoom our lens on the Australian share market's performance. Shares of the Australian stock market continue to trade higher by lunchtime as the strong global queues and buying across material and energy space supported the market. The benchmark index ASX 200 hit a record high this morning, led by gains in blue chip miners, BHP and Rio, as well as the banking majors. The ASX 200 was currently trading 0.16% higher and the index opened higher today tracking firm cues from Wall Street. In the overnight trade, the US stocks ended on a strong note led by gains in Apple and healthcare stocks. The Dow Jones climbed 0.8%. The S&P 500 ended 0.8% higher. The Nasdaq added 0.55%. Moving on now, the sectoral front showed seven of the 11 sectors were trading in the green zone. Material topped the charts uh, with 1% gains, followed by energy, which rose 0.7%. A REIT, utilities and consumer staples were also trading higher with modest gains. And meanwhile, healthcare was the worst performer, dropping nearly 0.5%. Tech sector also witnessed profit booking after strong rallies in the past two sessions. On the COVID-19 front, New South Wales reported 233 locally acquired cases and two more deaths, while Queensland recorded 17 new cases in Brisbane and Cairns. Given the rising cases of the highly contagious Delta variant, the Queensland government has proposed, postponed sorry, the ECHA public holiday for next week in Brisbane because of the outbreak and the annual show, which was due to start this weekend, was cancelled earlier this week. And let us turn our attention to the biggest gainers and losers that captured the investor attention by the mid-market session. Australian law firm Omni Bridgeway topped the gainers chart on the ASX rising 3.35%. Some of the other notable gainers were mining firm Nickel Mines, debt buyer Credit Corp Group, gold miner Remelius Resources and coal producer Whitehaven Coal. On the flip side, gold miner Chalice Mining was the top laggard with... 3.5% loss and some of the other worst performers include building and construction material group Borrell, media firm News Corporation, civil, co civil contractor NRW Holdings and payment solutions firm EML Payments. Moving ahead next to our segment focusing on the shares that grabbed the headlines today. And shares of insurance firm Genworth Mortgage rose over 6% after it declared dividends. Driven by strong profits, the company reported an underlying net profit after tax of 76.4 million Australian dollars for the half year ending 30th June 2021, compared to losses of 85.5 million Australian dollars. The Genworth board has also declared an unfranked interim ordinary dividend of 5 cents per share, its first dividend since the end of... 2019. And as per the company, the result reflects the improved economy, housing market appreciation and low interest rates experienced during the half. The performance was also supported by operational initiatives implemented last year in response to the new operating environment created by COVID-19. And now before we look at some more shares that are in the news today, it's time for a short break. Hi there, James Preston for Calkine TV. Are you into gaming and virtual reality? Does AI and the endless possibilities it entails capture your interest? Or are you constantly trawling through the web to try and discover the latest updates and innovations in the tech space? Well, let us do the work for you. From the latest product launches to shocking affairs on the World Wide Web, exclusive interviews and information about the top companies like Apple and Google to brand new tech startups vying for your attention. Kalkine's Tech Beat has the latest in what matters in the world of technology. Join me every single Monday on the Tech Beat, exclusive to Kalkine TV. Thanks for joining us, viewers. Welcome back. This is Sage. You're watching Kalkine TV live from Sydney. This is the Mid-Market Pulse show. Let us look at some ASX-listed shares that are trending today. 
The share price of Woodside Petroleum traded marginally higher after it issued updates on Scarborough project. The Australian natural gas producer said the costs for its offshore Scarborough gas development project are expected to reach 12 billion US dollars. The cost estimate is approximately 5% higher than the previous cost estimate announced in November 2019. The cost update includes value accretive scope changes to deliver an approximately 20% increase in offshore processing capacity to allow increased Scarborough gas processing. It also reflects the work undertaken with its contractors to optimise the execution schedule and manage costs. And moving on to the next automotive products manufacturer. GUD Holding dropped nearly 2% despite declaring dividends following rises in revenue and profits. Revenue for the year rose 27.2% while underlying net profits surged 32.7%. The revenue was driven predominantly by automotive revenue growth which was underpinned by strong organic growth combined with acquisitions. It has declared a final dividend of 32 cents a share up from the 12 cents a share dividend it paid last year. Also making the news, the share price of Serco gained over 1% after the Australian travel bookings firm issued business updates. And New Zealand domestic travel bookings have remained strong at 166% of 2019 volumes for the month of June and 137% of 2019 volumes for the month of July. However, the Australian domestic travel bookings dropped from 56% of 2019 volumes in June to 35% of 2019 volumes in July due to the further tightening of the interstate travel restrictions within Australia in response to the increase in the COVID-19 cases in some states. The company also flagged a delay to its enterprise integration with the giant US travel group, Booking.com. And moving on now, shares of Proteomics International Laboratory surged over 4% on plans to develop endometriosis tests. The Perth-based medtech company has joined hands with the University of Melbourne and the Royal Women's Hospital to develop a simple blood test for endometriosis. The collaboration aims to develop the world's first non-invasive blood test for endometriosis. Proteomics is to decide or to, and also study identified protein fingerprints in the blood known as biomarkers to test for endometriosis. And next up, shares of the banking major Westpac were trading marginally higher after the lender launched a COVID vaccine program in Western Sydney. The bank is launching the program for its employees and their families placed there. It has joined hands with the government to design vaccine operation. COVID Shield. It will offer AstraZeneca vaccines to its 200 branch employees in Western Sydney, about one fourth of the bank's branch network. And the next news also covers shares of BNK Banking Corporation as they climb nearly 2% on alliance with Goldman Sachs for 500 million Australian dollars securitisation warehouse. The financial services company has announced today that it has joined hands with Goldman Sachs to make an alliance to originate, fund and securitise specialist mortgages in Australia. It has signed binding definitive legal documents for an uncommitted 500 million Australian dollar residential mortgage warehouse program funded by Goldman Sachs and BNK will be acting as the originator, servicer and trust manager for the program. Goldman Sachs will be providing funding and will act as the arranger, structuring agent and distributor for securitizations. Let's move on now to REA Group's shares who rose 0.5 percent after it completed the sale of its Malaysia and Thailand entities to Property Guru in exchange for an 18 percent equity interest in Property Guru. The multinational digital advertising firm also shared that it has completed the divestment of its 27 percent interest in 99 Group. The combined transactions are likely to result in an overall net gain of approximately 12 million Australian dollars. And lastly, Rex Materials announced the launch of a two-tranche placement of new fully paid ordinary shares to raise approximately 50 million Australian dollars on Wednesday. The placement will feature the issue of approximately 166.7 million new fully paid ordinary shares at a price of 30 cents Australian per share. Thanks for joining us on that report. That's all for now. Keep watching Calkine TV as we bring you the latest news and trending market updates live from Sydney. Sage signing off.